the product that I'm going to talk about today. Uh, the current problems with chest tube drainage are fairly straightforward. Uh, this is a particular study that was done by the Cleveland Clinic reported three or four years ago that shows that uh, about a third of the chest tubes get clogged, uh, clogged up with blood clots following surgery. And that of those um, uh, clots, 86% of, uh, of these tubes include below the, the skin which means they're inaccessible. And uh, so we end up stripping chest tubes and doing lots of nasty things to them to try to get them out. This is an interesting study that was done last year, reported last year from Berlin, the impact the uh, retained blood requiring re-intervention on the outcomes after cardiac surgery. So this is uh, tried to answer the question, does it make any difference if the blood can't be evacuated? And you see virtually everything bad that can happen is increased uh, following uh, uh, retain blood in these chest tubes, and particularly in the pericardial space. Uh, and in, in addition, uh, even the uh, incremental cost for that that's, that's results that results from having this retained blood it is quite substantial per patient. So the objective was to improve the ability to get the blood out of the chest of the pericardium, and. Uh, this is a uh, photo taken from a report from the uh, Montreal Heart Institute that was published last year that shows this pluriflow plur active clearance uh, technology, or ACT. And uh, these tubes that are put in, I should tell you, are not regular chest tubes. They're very small, and they uh, are very soft uh, tubes, so they don't hurt quite so much coming out. And uh, the system, is based on a, a magnetic drive uh, so that there's a wire inside the soft chest tube and uh, this mechanism allows you to move that wire back and forth. And so if you have a, a, a clot inside this chest tube, then you simply move it back like so and extract it. And uh, it, uh, it, obviously you don't break the sterile field when you do that, so the nurses can do it every 15 minutes if they want. Uh, this is a report from Nuremberg on uh, 2,000 patients that had this uh, uh, system used, and, and there was a 43% reduction in retained blood, uh, which is consistent with most of the studies that have been done on this. So what are the results of improving this chest tube drainage? Well, there, there was a meta-analysis done uh, and reported the thoracic cardiovascular surgery earlier this year of uh, over th almost 3,500 patients. And there was a 90% reduction, 80% reduction uh, in almost every, every uh, bad thing that can happen, as I said. But the one that caught everybody's eye was there was almost a 60% reduction in post-operative atrial fibrillation. If you look at patients who get atrial fibrillation, uh, or, the, or the spectrum of atrial fibrillation following cardiac surgery, uh, you have about 5% of people who will get atrial fib if you do a knee operation on them or something, anything you do to them. And interestingly, you have about 65% of patients who won't get atrial fibrillation post op no matter what you do to them. So there's a vulnerable group here that, that, that develops uh, POAF only after cardiac surgery. If you add those to the 5% who all get, always get it, you always, in most studies across the board, about 35% incidence of POAF. The problem is that you can only affect 30% uh, of the people that you operate on by treating them prophylactically with anything. That's why drug therapy uh, has never been totally satisfying because you're subjecting the entire 100% to, to the side effects of the drugs. So this study again from Montreal Park was 300 patients and in matched groups of patients had a 31% reduction of POAF from 35% to 24%. It's usually an absolute reduction of 10% within that 30% category that you can affect. Uh, this study was from Nuremberg, uh, as I said, over 2,000 patients, 33% reduction from 30% to 20%. The evidence that, the, that reducing the retained blood decreases POAF in summary are these three studies, and they all show a substantial decrease in post-operative AFib. The impact on hospital costs is quite profound. Uh, 
this is a study from the uh, University of Virginia, I'm looking at all the people in the state of Virginia, almost 50,000 patients. There was an incremental cost of $12,000 per patient uh, in patients who had uh, uh, post-operative atrial fibrillation. This shows a similar thing of retained blood syndrome occurred in 17% of the national inpatient sample of 300,000 300, patients. And you can see the differences in the cost. It was about $28,000 per patient. Uh, the other, another major uh, database, the market scan database, was 250000 or so, was about $23,000 per patient. So the increased hospital cost has been shown to be a problem with all the studies that you see here. Uh, there's one uh, in Europe that showed 15,000 euro uh, per case increase. If you use those numbers and calculate, uh, your, say your patient population is 1,200 cases a year, hospital cost, despite the fact these, these tubes cost $395 a piece rather than 50 or whatever a regular chest tube costs, if you do 1,200 cases a year and use it in every patient, you'll save about, the hospital will save about $2 million. And you can look at the other numbers. Now, you do 400 cases, it's about 664. So, you actually, the hospital actually saves a substantial amount of money. So, chest tube clogging and retained blood are common problems. Retained blood increases post operative complications. A more effective clearance of retained blood would reduce those complications, including uh, post operative atrial fib. And this system, uh, the Pluriflow Active Clearance Technology, or ACT, is effective, uh, quite effective in, evac in evacuating retained blood and results in improved outcomes and increased hospital profits following cardiac surgery. Thank you.